My relations with my father uh, are quite multidimensional because not only he was my father but also uh, my professor of composition for many years. And this happened not only during my actual studies during the university years, but also uh, when I was still in high school. So I had many situations in which I, I see how he reacts to certain uh, musical events because we listened to plenty of music together, we studied scores, uh, or we were going to the live concerts uh, in, the, in the concert halls or, or we listened on the radio. So I had this immediate direct contact with with him, not only as a composer and a professor of composition, but also as a, a listener, which I think is quite interesting and, and fruitful. It may uh, give uh, maybe even greater insight to the mentality of, of, of a person when you see how he reacts to other uh, events uh, and, and the art of other uh, artists than just studying uh, his own works. Uh, so. In that sense, I feel I have certain maybe extra um, insights uh, into his musical points of view. In the late uh, 90s, uh, my father composed uh, many works despite certain opinions that uh, he stopped composing after the success of Third Symphony and so on. But uh, I must say it's not true because he wrote plenty of works uh, in the late 90s. And maybe not plenty, but quite, quite a few and some of them uh, are works of, of a quite large scale, including the Oratorio, uh, Sanctus ad Albertus, uh, and also the Fourth Symphony, of course, which is the main topic of our discussion here. The idea of writing the piece for the orchestra uh, with the theme of Alexander Tanzmann came from Łódź, from uh, organizers of the festival uh, in Łódź of Alexander Tanzmann. Uh, but unfortunately, my father did not compose this work on time. The deadline was not met, and uh, all the uh, project in some way collapsed. But from other organizations, uh, uh, England, uh, Netherlands, and, and United States, came the idea of writing a large-scale work, which would be a, a fourth symphony. Uh, and my father, who of course had quite advanced work on the piece for, for Wuch Festival uh, related to Tanzman, um, used the same uh, material. And this work, instead of being just 15, 20 minutes long, as it was originally planned, uh, became quite long, complex orchestral work. So the piece was composed, was finished in 2006 in the short score, uh, when I visit, visited him uh, here in, in Zomb uh, in 2006, in August. Uh, he played for me all this work. And it was quite interesting uh, thing. Of course, he played for me many other works uh, earlier. So I heard him playing the flute concert or, or the second string, uh, string uh, quartet and many others, Beatus Vier. And when I was a child, of course, I heard him playing a harpsichord concert and so on. So, uh, of course, I, I, it was nothing really new for me uh, to hear uh, him playing the piece. But it was, of course, quite something uh, interesting to hear the, the next symphony after the famous, uh, the, the third one. So when he played the piece for me in, uh, in August 2006, you know, I had the experience to see him not only playing the actual music, but also to see all his emotional uh, impact which he put into the performance of, of that work. The uh, commissioners, uh, that they waited for, uh, for, for the work. They hoped that my father, of course, would complete the piece. Uh, but it never happened. Even until 2010, the last months of his life, uh, there were still kind of hopes uh, of the organizers uh, that it may happen. But obviously, I knew that his health was quite quickly uh, deteriorating and it was basically impossible. So somehow I felt that that's going to be my, my, my job. So I did it in the spring of 2011. I orchestrated the entire work. Of course, certain sections were um, um, orchestrated by him, especially the chamber section in the slow movement, in the third movement. Uh, also, the use of the organ, uh, uh, use of the percussion, and so on. So, certain things were given, but all the tutis and the quite large sections in the, uh, especially in the third and the fourth movement, all fourth, fourth movement, I, I must say, uh, was done by me. So, I had to, of course, refer to his previous works, such as. 
flute concerto and the second symphony. No, all his major works for the, for the orchestra were quite helpful here. Um, so I had to, of course, um, think not in my own way as I would do it, only I, I have to kind of pretend uh, that I am using only his uh, way of uh, orchestra, men uh, orchestra mentality. So even certain things maybe are against my wish, but I knew that probably that would, would be his choice. So it was kind of a puzzle uh, to choose this closest uh, option, which probably he would like the most. Um, and I hope, I, at least in, I hope partly at least I succeeded, I don't know. At least most of the people said that there's no trace of another composer, which I must say made me happy, because that was the, that was the goal, that it will sound uh, as uh, genuine as possible. It will be 100 percent of him and nothing else. I don't live in Poland already for many years. I, I left Poland uh, in late 90s. Uh, but I was constantly in touch with my father. We always spoke on the phone. Usually it was Sunday, sometimes for one hour or more. So I, I must say I was quite well informed what was going on in his life. Uh, so I knew about all his commissions or the pieces he worked on. Also he asked me about my stuff and so on. So it was constant exchange of, of thoughts and, and this what was going on in our lives. Uh, but also he said many times, not only by phone, but of course when we met in person, usually here in Poland during my vacations, uh, that all his later works probably I will be completing. Uh, it means that he just leaves the short score and, and then my task will be to, to finalize uh, the, the project. And it happened. Uh, we had in total more or less, f as far as I remember in this moment, five works. Uh, Sanctus Adalbertus, the oratory, which he wrote in 1997, where, of course, he was still in great shape, but somehow, due to unknown reasons, or maybe I know the reasons, because he was just uh, quite busy with, uh, with the new house, which he, he bought here in the mountains, so somehow it absorbed uh, all his attention, and for a moment he stopped being composer. So, so this oratory, which was written, completed in 1997, was left uh, not in the full score, only in the short score. So. Uh, I, I, I did. It was a very easy job because there was almost everything written down, what he wanted. It was just a matter of basically copying most of the time. It was just a few measures where I had to make some decisions. In case of the fourth symphony, it was uh, uh, more complicated because we had those, those unknown sections that we really didn't know what, what uh, at least it was not written down on the paper. Knowing his music, knowing his, his personality, I can't say uh, that it was quite difficult for me to guess what uh, what he m would use in this or another section. Uh, there were some moments, maybe the hardest one was the piano playing in extremely low register, and it was not really written that it's piano, so, but there was no other instrument who could, which could play the thing. So my guess, I think, is right that he wanted piano. This is mainly, I, I mean, it's one section in the first movement and the end. And we have also Kyrie, which uh, he left um, in some way unfinished. I mean, all measures are there, all music is there, but it was not really finished score, uh, and also uh, two postludes uh, inspired by Wagner, Tristan postludes and Chorale. Uh, in that case, there's absolutely no information what uh, instruments, what orchestra is supposed to be used, but again, I orchestrated, so here we openly say that I orchestrated that work, because we can't bend the truth that, that much. Uh, um, so it's orchestrated by me for a string orchestra and a couple of percussion instruments, harp and piano. And I think my guess is quite close to this, what he would use. So we may, of course, take a look also at the fourth symphony in the context of the, the previous ones, uh, the first, the second, the third. So the people who obviously are fans of the third symphony only, well, they can be surprised because the fourth symphony is quite different from, from the third. Uh, but if, of course, uh, someone knows the entire output of my father, especially his first, second, and the third symphony, no, we'll notice that there's one pattern, it means that there's no pattern. <laughs> so each symphony was completely different, uh, or is completely different. Um, the first one is uh, from the period when he was still experimenting. It's a kind of avant-garde music from um, late 50s, early 60s. It was written in 1959, uh, using only percussions and strings. It's a quite violent music, almost brutal in some moments. 
uh, absolutely uh, atonal. That what was a fashion in the in the time. But um, of course, we've added emotional impact, which was not that common maybe in, in late 50s in, in that kind of music. Then we have the second symphony uh, from the uh, first half of 70s, uh, which is a Copernican symphony, and that's the piece which in many ways maybe is the closest to the, his final fourth symphony, uh, especially the first movement. We have uh, this enormous blocks of sound, uh, which is supposed to uh, somehow illustrate uh, this mass of universe moving, because that was the main topic of the second symphony, is the uh, discovery of the, of the solar system by, by Copernicus. And then we have the third symphony, which is very different from, I would say, even from most of his works. Uh, so some people maybe think that he wrote mainly uh, some sweet, slow music, uh, and that he was some melancholic man. <laughs> but it's, the truth is exactly opposite. Yes. Uh, I think it's one of his most unusual works, uh, that we have three movements which are very slow. The, he did uh, such a thing only one more time in his uh, third uh, string quarter, that we have five movements, and most of them are, are very slow. But still, even there, it's just one movement which is uh, more energetic and faster. But as far as I know, it's very hard to find in his output uh, multi-movement work, which will be uh, built only of slow movements. Almost always, if there's some movement, there's some contrast. Of course, we have large works like Miserere, uh, and that's one movement work, uh, and almost all the time in, in, in slow movement. And now the fourth, uh, the fourth symphony, of course, um, it's a kind of a, you may say, a mix of uh, many, many ideas, which we may find even in Beatus Vir. In certain way, maybe this work would be the closest, especially when we look at the opening of the work, the, the beginning of the first movement and the beginning of Beatus. It's almost the same uh, harmonic climate. And of course, that was the thing with, to which I related when I was orchestrating, to achieve the same more or less uh, massive sound of the orchestra, uh, huge tutti. And also, of course, there's some uh, relation uh, with the beginning of the second symphony, the use of the percussion and so on. Uh, now, when we move to the final movement of, of, of fourth symphony, we see there are certain kind of uh, circus music elements, uh, uh, which we must say were quite strongly present in his late works, starting with the Kleiner Requiem, uh, which he wrote in still in, in, in 93, and in the flute concerto. Uh, so, it was not just an episode that he wrote a few works with, with that kind of style of music. Uh, even in his final symphony, he used it. So, uh, the orchestration of that section, I kind of borrowed from the flute concerto, where it's almost the same uh, material, at least very similar. Uh, so, this symphony, we may say, is a kind of a sum or summarum of uh, his general style, especially uh, with emphasis on his late style from, from 90s.